Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the Royal Kludge R75 Pro, a gasket mounted three mode QMK via keyboard from Royal Kludge. Yeah, gasket mounted QMK via, and I will be sharing the source files. So this is another one in the series. I recently reviewed the R65. This is the R75, obviously 75%. We have a three key navigation column. We have an F13 or delete key with a knob. Um, and we have a pretty standard 75%. I mean, it is compact as it's not exploded out uh, with the arrow clusters. We do have a blocker there and we do have a blocker there with some light indicators. But I have to say, I have enjoyed the R65 and I do have to spend a little bit more time with the QMK source, but so far everything that I've seen is working as expected. So, but I haven't yet written my own, um, though I intend to, and I intend to do a more in-depth via video as well as a more higher level overview of QMK as well as the other options out there or firmwares like ZMK, TMK and others in case you're looking to design your own keyboard. Also planning and this is probably a little bit down the line but I'm going to take a pre-made keyboard I'm going to use an MCU and I'm going to rewire it or basically turn it into an open source keyboard. The only thing that I won't have control over is the LEDs, which I don't think is going to be that big of a thing because I'm just going to set them to one color and then forget it. Then I'm going to wire an MCU to an existing PCB and then use that MCU to control the keyboard and all of the layers and everything but the LED. So that's one of the many videos that I have in the works. Today we're taking a look at this 75% with a knob three mode from Royal Kludge that does have the QMK and via source and I'll be sharing that with you here later on. But first things first, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we've got waiting for us. Now before taking a look at the keyboard, I always like to take a look at what's in the box. Um, beforehand and it looks like we have a pretty good user manual that goes over all the functionality in the box we have a standard wire switch and keycap puller that is branded with royal kludge we have a standard usb-c to usb-a rubberized cable also included are four extra rk cream or chartreuse switches um, the r65 that i reviewed had these as well they are a pretty decent linear with a long pull. They're a little bit clackier than, say, the normal creams, but they're a pretty good linear switch. I think it's honestly one of the better switches I've seen from RK because it's one of the first I've seen that's not a standard, you know, brown, blue, or red. And we have one extra key. It's the end key. And I think I know why that's there, but let's see. Let's get to it and see if... That's really what it's there for. And here we are with the Royal Clutch R75 Pro. Um, we do have a dust cover. Thank you, Royal Clutch. You include extra switches. You also include a dust cover. I'll, I'll continue to say this, but covering up your keyboard when not in use is going to just give you the most lifetime possible with your keyboard because you're not going to have all the tiny stuff that's floating in the air that we can't see dirt, detritus, mites, get into the PCB and the switches and cause issues or even possible shorts uh, with buildup. So this is going to ensure that your keyboard will last as long as it should last. Now, I just wanted to do a quick contrast. I've got to say, I don't believe that these colorways are stealing anything. Um, I think that they've come up with their own colorways and I've got to say though these are slightly different this is a little bit lighter of a blue this is a little bit darker and obviously the colors on here are different than here but I have to say I quite enjoy these colorways now blue is my favorite color so I might be a little bit biased when it comes to this because we've got almost every tone of blue available but I've got to say I'm really digging these. 
So yes, as we can see, we have a 75% layout. It is a uh, compact. We do have a blocker, but we do have the normal one and a quarter modifier keys right next to the space bar. We have the short shift. We have the arrows. We have a blocker here for our light indicators. It looks like uh, caps lock, windows lock, and charging. Now, what I was thinking when I saw that end key is, yep, I thought so. We have a hot swappable knob. Now this knob is, this is the second hot swappable knob that I've seen. Um, the other one is from Skyloom, I believe, but this one has a different standard. And it actually looks like, hmm, there's a, what looks like a diffuser in there. I wonder if light actually comes through. A curiosity. Oh, and this one is also the same way. When you flip it up this way, it's actually reading this way. The other um, 2.4 dongle actually came like this and was like, oh, because this is the most likely the way that one's going to look at the back of the keyboard. But let me turn it on just real quick. Oh, no. I thought that was going to shine light through. I guess I was wrong. Oh, well. No biggie. Let's go ahead and take a look at these keycaps here. We do have some decent. They are. This is not top of the line, but it's definitely not bottom of the barrel. Um, these are some nice, decent legends on here. We see that they are double shot PBT. So when measuring these keycaps, they're going to come in at 1.6 millimeters in thickness. That is real nice. Not only for a Royal Kludge, but for any pre-built keyboard. There, there's not going to be that many that have keycaps that are that thick. On average, the thickest keycaps on pre-built keyboards are 1.3, 1.4. So having 1.6 millimeter keycaps is a huge positive thing. It's going to make for a more defined, deeper tone. All right, let's pop this chartreuse out here. So taking a quick look at the PCB, we do have the hi-fi layers with the PET plastic above the PCB and the IXPE above that with the center hole already punched out. And it does feel like we have maybe a neoprene below that, below the PCB. We do have plate mounted stabilizers. As we can see, we do have lubrication both inside of the stem and on the elbows. The spots more in the, where most of the contacts are going to happen between the wire and the stabilizer. Now, peeking down inside, it does not look like we have the ability for screw in stabilizers. Thankfully, the ones I've come across so far, these newer palm ones, really have good tolerances with the plate. So, we ha I haven't come across any issues with ticking as of yet. We do have a PC plate that is gasket mounted. Yes, a royal clutch with a gasket mounted PC plate. I know. For so long, we uh, perhaps, I mean, for those of us that have been doing this for a while, RK, decent boards, good price, but it was always pretty much a standard steel plate tray mounted. But now we actually have choice of gasket mounting. And not to go off on a side rant, but if you spend more than an hour typing on a keyboard, Typing on a gasket mounted keyboard, whether it be a Royal Kludge or any other one, I think you're going to see the difference. If you're currently using a tray mounted plate, yes, the switches are going to give, but an analogy I like to use, it's like hitting a brick wall if you're in a car without any brakes. It's going to be a very rough stop. Whereas, say if you have some brakes and you have, you know, the crumple zones, a lot of that action, that force that's coming in, it's going to be dissipated. So it's not going to be as hard on your hands. When you're doing a tray mounted plate, that momentum is going to be fed back into your hands. And for me anyway, after about an hour, hour and a half, I start to feel it on a tray mounted keyboard. But when I'm using a gasket mounted keyboard, I can go for hours and I will not have, I do not experience that level of pain that I would and pain and discomfort that I would using a standard tray mount keyboard. As we can see that the tolerances are pretty good. We have a little bit of looseness, but not enough to cause any ticking or any issues.
Now, the default sound profile on this keyboard, I think, is nice. It is a little bit more on the clackier side, but I'm going to think that a good majority of the people will be satisfied with the way it sounds out of the box. I'm going to go ahead and test drive it like I did the R65 and come back to both of them and see what kind of sound profiles we can get out of them. Because Brandon, just because keyboards sound good out of the box doesn't mean we can't mod them and make them sound different. And I have a pretty good idea that these are going to sound pretty good with just the most minimal amount of modding and then switching out the switches and perhaps even the keycaps. Like I said, for the other one, I've got a keycap set, although it might actually work better with this one, of some SA keycaps that I think will just look lovely on here. But that's for another day. Today, we're just sticking to how the keyboard functions and what we've got stock out of the box. So we do have the option, you know, some people don't want an option. So they can go ahead and, I mean, obviously you're going to have to do some rearranging here, but thankfully with VIA, we have the ability to remap everything. We could put one of those extra switches there, move home up to there, put end here, depending on, that end looked pretty tall. So I'm going to say it probably will work right here. So we'd have delete home and page up, page down. So if you don't need the knob, then you can replace it with a key. I personally prefer using a knob. Uh, for my volume control, as when I'm programming, I tend to play my music very loud. And if I see somebody talking to me, I can just tap it, put it on mute without having to do a key combination. Listen to what they have to say, untap it, and keep on with my loud music. What do you guys like to listen to when you're, when you're coding or when you're working on your keyboard? I know when I'm coding, some of the best stuff to listen to is just hardcore death metal and grindcore and just, I don't know, anything from Slayer, Ministry. I like the hard music and it helps me. It's funny because people are like, how do you concentrate with that? It's like, I actually, it helps me concentrate a lot. It like takes one part of my brain and keeps it busy. So the, the programming part of my brain can focus on the issues that I'm solving at hand, but that's just me. I would love to hear what you guys are listening to though. Put them down in the comments below. Anyway, we have a lovely keycap set. We have a very nice font. I like that they're not all the way up in the corner, though I would like to see them a little bit bigger. Um, like I said, the legends are pretty good. They're not top of the line, but they're definitely, I've definitely seen much worse than this. So for a pre-built keyboard, which, I mean, for a long time, many of us that have been in the hobby, a pre-built is just kind of a bare bone with some extra parts that we're just going to take and set to the side while we, you know, add our own switches and keycaps. But pre-builds are, are getting better. And Royal Kludge is definitely one of the ones leading the pack. Um, they have been around in four years. They continue to put out keyboards that are solid. Um, I personally knock on wood have yet to have a, an RK board die and I have quite a few of them um, so but the few people that have had issues um, that I've read about have said that RK's support is very attentive now I know that I've communicated with their team through different departments and every single time it's been a pleasant experience but as far as keyboards go, it's probably one of the ones I hear the least issues about. And being that I run a couple of forums, I have this channel, people communicate a lot with me about, you know, their experiences, their keyboards, their thoughts, everything like that. So while what I'm saying is obviously anecdotal, it's something that, I mean, that I use as kind of a baseline because there's a lot of people that come to me and say, hey, you know, I got this keyboard because I watched your video and I liked that it had A, B, C, D, you know, and then I had an issue, but I contacted them and they took care of it. And that's what I like to hear. And Royal Kludge is one of those companies that stand behind their products. And now they're they're starting to up their game. They, they kind of rested on their laurels for a while, which was fine because 
there was a lot of people, even up until <laughs> even this year, where people would be like, oh, I just want a cheap board to, you know, to get to learn mechanical keyboards, how to mod everything. 60% RK61, 65% RK68, 70% RK71. I mean, on and on, there's, there has always been an arcade board in the majority of layouts. Although, I wonder if we'll see a Royal Kludge Alice or a Royal Kludge 40. Now that would be interesting, or even a Royal Kludge split. I am pretty sure because I've had back and forths with RK, I know they watch my videos, and I have before said, oh, I would love to see an RK board with QMK Via. All of a sudden we've got QMK Via. Now maybe it's a bunch of people telling them, but I'd like to believe that they're watching my videos and perhaps listening because we're getting keyboards that are definitely a step up or several steps up in my opinion and they're sticking at competitive market pricing so you still have what you know some would consider a budget keyboard that has features that even a year ago would have definitely cost over a hundred dollars or maybe even twice as much as these do msrp and as with many of the keyboards, MSRP is just the suggested retail price. Um, whether it's a discount code that I'll share in my videos, which is usually Mac Tech or Mac Tech Keys, um, given a five or 10% discount on most of the stores out there. Sometimes they go on sale, sometimes they're on Amazon with a coupon for 20, 25% off. So if you're looking for one of these, I mean, if you're just, if you like the price the way it is, go for it. But if you search and you spend a little time, you'll most likely be able to find a discount code and always get it a little bit cheaper than MSRP. So, and I think most companies do that obviously to, you know, make people feel like they got a deal. But like I said, with RK boards, you've got a company that has been around for a while. They stand behind their products and now they're really coming out with some nice products. Anyway, I... I'm loving this keyboard. I love the two tones. I love the, it's the logo's there, but it's so just kind of washed, washed out. It It's cool. And it's something that it's not like, oh, I'm going to take that off because it detracts from it. If nothing else, it adds to it because it has the blue. I love how the blue of the, I guess, top case or top inner case also gets followed through down at the bottom. We have two sets of flip out feet with a nice wide um, stance, so they should be quite stable when we use them. Oh yeah, that's not going anywhere. We have a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle that is also branded, so we're not gonna have to worry if for some reason it falls out somewhere and we come across it and say, oh, there it is, it goes to my Royal Kludge board. Then, like I said, we have the Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz mode right here and the letters are facing our way because this is most likely the way that we're going to look at it and it makes sense to me as well as the USB-C port again you know we have the ability to replace I like using the knob I add insert underneath the leap and here I could just hat end underneath home and we're going to town so I'm going to see how that I'm going to guess that in via it's going to give us an option of turning on or off the um, encoder. Now let's go ahead and see what this keyboard looks like with the lights on. It comes on basically immediately. It does look like we have some nice bright LEDs. Yeah. They're definitely coming through nicely. That's brightness, that's speed. All right, standard setup. We could see that that PC plate also helps to diffuse, and we do have south-facing keyboard. Um, I know there's this whole split between south and north-facing. Um, a lot of the newer switches have had their moldings modified, so there's no longer any issue with north-facing and cherry keycaps. Um, with a lot of switches, there are still some switches that have not ad adopted or there's many stores that probably have older stock of the same switches that have been updated. And in using South Facing, I mean, in my opinion, South Facing is more of an enthusiast thing. Though, if you want Shine Through keycaps, all you have to do is get what are called front Shine Through or side Shine Through, where 
it's actually up down here so that light actually comes through you can see your legends light up with the leds so which i've seen some people prefer it that way so i personally i'm not a big proponent of shine through keycaps so i really i don't really stand on either side of or north or south facing um if i had to pick i'd say i prefer south facing but i really it really doesn't bother me one way or the other now i think that was probably a wasted opportunity it would have been nice to see this actually be lit through because of that what feels like a pc plastic it looks like an led diffuser that would have been really nice but yeah out of the box this works as volume control and let's see if it has anything with function now, it seems to be the same thing with function enabled um via should allow us to modify that for zoom play and pause fast forward rewind um whatever multimedia functions we'd like to do just the specs today we are taking a look at the royal kludge r75 pro a three mode 75 percent with a hot swappable knob and an f13 or delete key it comes with a gasket mounted pc plate a three and five pin hot swap south facing pcb with both hi-fi layers and dampening. It comes preloaded with the RK Cream or Chartreuse linear switch, as well as double shot PVT keycaps in the Cherry Profile that come measuring in at 1.6 millimeters in thickness. It is preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity battery and comes weighing in at 749 grams. The chin of the ski board sits at 21 millimeters while the back sits at 30 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Flipping out the first set of fold-out feet will take the back height to 34 millimeters and the angle of typing to 9 degrees. Folding out the final set of flip-down feet will take your back height to 40 millimeters and change your angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $65.99 before discounts from RK Store links and discount code below so we've got a lovely 75 percent here i love the fact that it has that option to switch out the knob i mean who knows there might be times that hey i'm gaming and i don't need the knob and i need an extra key there or whatever the case may be having options to make that keyboard more personalized towards the end user i think it's a winning choice in just about any situation um there's a lot of mechanical keyboards out there, but this one, this one is mine. Making it your own is kind of a big part of the hobby and kind of the big part of any hobby. Um, changing things, making things fit to what you like, I think is a big part of the hobby, um, especially for newcomers finding out what they like. I mean, you know, you may have people who are like, oh, I've been using clickies for a while and I really like it. But the sound, it's like, have you tried a tactile? What's that? And then they discover the world of tactiles, or they discover the world of linear, or they discover silent switches, because some people would prefer their keyboard not to make any noise at all. And that's the beauty of the mechanical keyboard hobby. It's a tool that many of us are going to continue to use daily. I mean, I don't see us moving to working off of our phones exclusively anytime soon anyway. So com computer keyboards are going to remain a uh, tool for many professionals whether you're in finance technology i mean numerous different fields a keyboard is going to be necessary and to make that keyboard work for you and be personalized not only something that you enjoy looking at but something that you enjoy using and if you set it up properly it's going to increase your productivity which in many fields means it's going to also increase your profitability so uh, that's why i for years just really didn't think twice too much about keyboards now the mat the microsoft natural keyboard came out and i practically would just buy a new one of those every year whether mine was working or not a lot of times because they were just <laughs> pretty used i i kind of used my keyboards uh, if I only had one keyboard right now, it'd probably be looking pretty rough as I'm not the easiest on my keyboards. But 
that was really the only time that I kind of looked at different keyboards until I got into the hobby. Um, I mean, I bought my first mechanical keyboard that wasn't ones that I used. I mean, because I, I did back in the day, I had buckling spring keyboards, but I didn't think twice about them. Um, but one of the first or the first mechanical keyboards that I bought post Cherry Patton laps um, was the Disco TKL. That was a combination, I think, with Ducky and MechanicalKeyboards.com, which I still have. I just recently updated it and actually made it sound and look quite nice. And I'm surprised how well uh, the keyboard just keeps on churning. I actually, I did, it, it, it had a mini USB port, the squarish one. I was just getting mini and micro mixed up. I'm pretty sure mini is the correct one, the, the one that is more square as opposed to thinner. Um, and I replaced the port with a USB-C port and it still works. And it is light for days because it's actually one of the few keyboards that uses the four pin LEDs that actually go through the slot. And I don't think I have one anywhere nearby here, but there are some switches that you may notice that they don't have an SMD window. They actually have four little pinprick holes out of the bottom. That's meant for those, those LEDs that they literally have four legs. Um, if you look closer on a PCB, you'll find that there's four contact points. Um, I believe one is power control, and then the other three make up one for each color to send the signal based on what color it's to set R, G, and B. Mechanical keyboards are a tool that will continue to be necessary in many, many fields for years to come. So why not use a keyboard that not only you appreciate looking at, but you also appreciate using. And if nothing else, even if it saves you, you know, just 15, 20 minutes a day, that's going to add up. It is something that I think a lot of people may not even know about though i see people every day hey i'm new to mechanical keyboards this is what i'd like or i think i like this or i think i like that and that's why on reddit i do my best to help out everybody that's new to the hobby answer as many questions as i can either through youtube through reddit uh, through other social media platforms that i share my content on because i, I i've always enjoyed helping people uh, i've been in it uh, for all my professional career, I, I, even before I went to university, I was doing IT work. Um, and a big part of why I enjoy doing it, yes, I'm good at math. Yes, I enjoy code. But I also love solving problems or creating solutions and helping people. So I took that want to help people and that want to solve problems and brought it into the IT world and always did my best to leave my customers, my clients happier than they were before I came into the picture. But anyway, that's, that's going down a whole nother road. This is a lovely keyboard. It's only just a few dollars more than the 65%. So if you're somebody that needs to have the function keys and don't want to do the function number combination, and would like a knob, I mean, for a few dollars more, this is probably gonna be a good bet. But if not the 65%, it does have the knob, and it's probably gonna be, you know, because you, if you see, the keyboards are basically the same width. So you're really not gonna, if you're looking for save space or saving space on your desktop, you're gonna find that both the 65% and 75% are gonna have pretty much the same width as far as footprint goes, just the 75% is going to be a little bit taller because it has that extra row. If you really want or use that function row a lot, then I'd say spend a few bucks more and get the R75. If not, the R65, I think is going to be a good board. And at the price they have it at, it is a great beginner board. Um, if you want to get in there, modify, see how different switches sound, the tape mod, maybe remove the the hi-fi layers, or maybe add something different, maybe add some different padding underneath. There's still a lot of things that can be done to change the sound profile and make it yours, changing out the keycaps, the switches, so on and so forth. But at this price, and the price for the R65, it's just, it's kind of a no-brainer because like I said, even just a year ago, 
you'd be looking a lot more for something with this feature set. Um, or you might be able to get something similar without the hot swap, but bare bone. This actually has decent keycaps and some decent switches. Um, like I said, I will be coming back to this keyboard and the other, the R65 here in the near future. If you have any questions, comments, anything that you'd like for me to take a look at when I'm inside of there, please let me know down in the comment sections below. Do my best to answer each and every question as quickly as possible. So I do hope that you enjoyed the review. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for what you'd like to see me do once I get into this keyboard, please do let me know. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Royal Clutch RK R75 Pro. Um, a thumbs up, a subscribe really does go a long way, and it helps my small channel to continue to grow. But for right now, I want to wish you wonderful people out there in YouTube land a beautiful rest of your day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.